you have to flip a few pages to get to the next slide. Alright, the next is 2.1.2, whose title is incorrect here. The incorrect title is Cuba Nominations for NASCAR Members. And um, I have set a debate time of 12 minutes for the site. And number 5 is suggested. And 15 is suggested. 10. 8. Okay. Any other rise? Okay, 15, 12, 10, 8, 5. Uh, those in favor of uh, 15 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you, those opposed? Uh, no, that's not it. Those in favor of 12 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you, those opposed? No, that's not it. Those in favor of 10 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you, those opposed? Uh, the ayes have it, big time to set it. 10 minutes. Next item of business is 2.1.3, short title, A Story by Any Other Name. I've uh, set a big time limit of 12 minutes for this item. Are there are other values people would like to have considered? 20? 5? Any other values? Okay. Those in favor of 20 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, nays have it. Those in favor of 12 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. It's 12 minutes. Uh, the next item is uh, performers are fans too. This is 2.1.4 on page 10 of the agenda. That adds a new category. Uh, best fan performer. A performing artist in any medium whose work has appeared at conventions or through other public non-professional display during the previous calendar year. I have set the debate time on this at 10 minutes. 20? 5. 5. Any other values? Those in favor of 20 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. The names have it. Those in favor of 10 minutes, please raise your hand. What about the 12? Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, 10. It's the majority in favor of 10. Um, is there a claim that there was some value that I didn't pay attention to or something? I think there was some reason to do students setting 12 for all of them. Right. I think to 10 to this one. Right. I think that was something you should have resolved that. Succeeded in defeating. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, 10 minutes for that. So, I think we did pretty well here to get through that. Um, we are now on section 3, committee reports and motions. Um, we only consider the motions at the time the committee uh, report comes up for motions proposed by committees. Uh, the first committee reporting is the Mark Production Committee. First, Mr. Chairman, question of privilege. I thought we had a total of three hours allocated for this. Is it only two? Or we only have two no, no. Hours? It's, we have uh, I say we have two programming spots. Oh, well, we have three. Oh, I see. We have until one. We have, one. Yeah. We have until one o'clock, is that correct? Right. Fine. I don't, Mr. No, it's in, Mr. Chairman, because when I saw that, I wasn't sure of our response. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I am, as you know, Kevin Stanley. Not everybody knows that. Most of you know. I'm the chairman. I am the current chairman of the Wispus Mark Protection Committee. The, uh, to, for the benefit of those of you who don't haven't been following along all the notes, the Mark Protection Committee is the only Wispus Committee uh, directly chartered by the Constitution as opposed to appointed by the business meeting and created to the site selection process. It is responsible for managing the intellectual property of WISPA, specifically the service marks on words like Worldcon and Hugo Award and others. I'm not certainly not going to read the entire report, which is rather long and is in the back of the agenda, but I read something I do wish to call a couple of things to the committee to the meeting's attention, just a second, I forgot my notes. 
First and most importantly, is that the Mark Protection Committee, in conjunction with LawnCon 3, and with the very, very valuable and timely assistance of two past WorldCon running organizations, CanSmoth, Anticipation, and uh, Skiffy, LACon 4, fought off this year a very significant threat to the Hugo Awards by an organization. Now, you will not have heard much of this because much of the work was going on quietly and we had no desire to get a lot of publicity on it. Uh, but it is included in the report and has to do with a company called Fancaster and with the Hugo Award for Best Fancast. Earlier this year, a company in the United States called Fancaster, which uh, is apparently engaged in the process of attempting to monetize fan-produced podcasts primarily in sports, but also sells some sort of product that has the word Fancaster on it, uh, sent a cease and desist letter to LongCon 3 saying that Fancaster has an EU service mark on the word Fancaster and therefore LongCon must immediately cease and desist presenting a Hugo Award for Best Fancast. Well, LongCon contacted the Mark Protection Committee, which are effectively co-litigants co to the extent we are, this is legal, and engaged solicitors here in the UK. The Mark Protection Committee worked with our uh, United States IP attorney, Esther Horwich. And a lot of calls and emails and research was done. The advice of counsel was that Fancaster's claim does not is, is not really that good. And uh, at, before such time as the demand letter from Fancaster expired, LonCon 3, working on their behalf and on behalf of Elizabeth NPC, responded to Fancaster several months ago saying effectively, we don't believe your claim is good and we are not going to stop giving out Best Fancast. We have not heard from them, from Fancaster, since that time. But just getting to that point cost over 8,000 pounds in legal fees in the UK and a couple thousand dollars in US legal fees. The US legal fees were paid for by the Mark Protection Committee's general fund. 8,400 pounds is around 15,000 US dollars. LonCon 3 paid their entire amount of traditional donation to WSFIS, a fee that is normally paid after the WorldCon when they know they have the money. In addition, they paid the 1,400 pounds of GS, I mean a VAT. Um, that left a little bit over $10,000 US. Um, CanSmoth donated 5,000 Canadian dollars toward it. And <coughs> Skiffy, donated 5,000 US dollars to it, and I will note, uh, looking at their financial report, that that $5,000 not only, uh, that because it was done after their fiscal year closed in our report, it not only ate up the, the tiny amount of money of LA Con reportable funds, but it was also skiffy non con funds, mostly, that was covered this. And there was also a couple hundred dollars from the WSPAS NPC's general fund. And if it weren't for the fact that AussieCon 4 uh, liquidated their organization and donated what was left of their funds to the NPC, our ongoing operating expenses would also have brought, and, uh, would have brought us down to very little money in the NPC's accounts. We have, uh, our financial report is listed in here. Subsequent to the report you see published, we've also received a $3,750 $3, donation from Lone Star Con. And that's been very helpful as well. The point is, is that there is no way that the Mark Protection Committee could have supported this effort without the really timely efforts of WorldCon committees, and that's good, but it also points out some other issues we have. Now, the Mark Protection Committee believes at this point we have accomplished what we set out to do with protecting the, our best fan cast Hugo and Hugo Awards as a whole. Um, this effort is somewhat on hold any further than that, pending any further actions by Fancaster. But the Mark Protection Committee, in addition to the items you see in the report, also does believe that it is important that WSPAS revisit the funding mechanism for the Mark Protection Committee, which has not changed since 1984 that I'm aware of. Um, and the MPC does intend to spend this next year preparing a long term, which is to say approximately 10 year 
planning budget showing what our costs are because our costs run over a 10 year cycle approximately due to the various renewal fees on service marks. And in particular, we do very much want to begin the process of registering our marks EU wide. Because the only country that we currently have trademark registration protection is the United States. And that leads into my other point here as I put down my notes. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, somewhat reluctantly, but is prepared to deal with unincorporated associations. No other country in which WISPAS has a desire to register service marks, and our policy has been to register them based on the number of world cons having been held there, and for this purpose, treating the EU as a single country for this purpose. Uh, EU is actually the second highest priority. None of these other countries will deal with unincorporated associations. They said we would either have to find individual human beings to act as agents, or we need to create some sort of legal entity that can be recognized by those. The NPC has discussed this at some length and will continue to do so, but has asked uh, for some guidance from the business meeting and therefore introduces as a resolution on page 13. And I do now make on behalf of the committee the motion uh, labeled with it good that uh, resolved that the business meeting recommends that the Mark Protection Committee establish a Worldcon Intellectual Property Trust, or WIPIT, to act as a legal entity for holding title to WISPAS's service marks, such entity to be under the control of the Mark Protection Committee. And I do believe the, the argument for that resolution might have basically made it in advance in making the motion. Uh, and so it doesn't need a second, of course, because it's coming out of the committee, Mr. Chairman. Whoops. <coughs> Yes? Yeah, I'll come for the next time. Sure. I still have time on the debate minutes for this. <laughs> I'm slightly left of Cornish being hard. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is David Lally and I'm former chairman of the European Science Fiction Society, WSF's little brother. Due to certain financial circumstances next year, I am in a position to meet half cost mentioned in item 20, that is £4,500. 2250, I'm in a position to produce half of that cover of the amount, which means that you can probably file not only in the UK, but the entire EU, which is also the jurisdiction of PSS, subject to this WIPT idea, which is a good idea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So that was a speech in favor of this. A resolution. Uh, is there a speech against? Yeah. No. Sure. It was brief. What would the proposed tax status of this resolution? Mr. Chairman, this resolution is not. We are not. Have not yet researched all of the details of it. The implementation details are beyond the scope of the motion. This does not. This resolution does not establish it. Nor does the NPC actually know exactly what it would do because it needs to deal with our U.S. attorney. It would be a U.S. legal entity because it, uh, we would have it before which work with its honest. So we do not know the answer to that exactly. There was a question. Well, the yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the uh, effect of, uh, of a resolution with recommendation? Very little. <laughs> it's, it's just uh, establishing the sense of the uh, sense of the business meeting for the part of the country. I would say that's correct, yes. Thank you. Uh, speech uh, in favor of the resolution? Oh, yeah. I establish a time limit of eight minutes. I will think we'll need it. Uh, yes? I'll speak in favor. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, well, it, it, 
it cuts a considerable amount of money that could be a continuing illegal incorporation in the UK. So we would want to round close the. Sorry. <coughs> sorry. Oh, I'm quite tired of that. <laughs> um, uh, the. Uh, the. The cost of saving the corporate body are reasonably uh, intrusive in the UK. Um, we would not want. That's why uh, Glasgow closed down its books as quickly as possible. And the previous sort of the UK World Council did the same thing. It's one, we like to close down books quickly. But secondly, it, there are actually a significantly more costs to sustain in the corporate body. Um, several thousand pounds of accounting fees and stuff like that would be paid each year just in for doing almost nothing. Right. A speech against the resolution? Seeing none, are we ready for a vote? Anyone uh, speak? Nobody. All those in favor of the resolution, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? I uh, believe it is approved unanimously. Uh, thank you. And that, that, that disposes of this as a matter of passage of the night, so it's so been passed. Uh, is there any more? Uh, well, uh, as far as stuff coming from the NPC, unless there are questions regarding the rest of the report, where that ends the report of the NPC. However, the chair, the, uh, we yield for questions. Uh, one question. You, you talked about the litigation that's taking place to, uh, to today, and that you don't know about the future. What is the best expectation you have from the lawyers? Uh, we actually had uh, one of the solicitors is here at the convention, and she attended the NPC meeting. She's fairly confident that we're good at this point. Um, we did have the prospect of, you might say, going on the offensive, if you like, and filing an invalidity action to, to try and invalidate their EU service mark. That's also a very expensive proposition and also requires an entity of some sort, either an individual or legal entity. It didn't have to be in the uh, EU. Um, we are uncertain whether this is the correct use of a rather substantial sum of, of money that we do not have. <laughs> are there any other questions for the Mark Correction Committee? Yeah. Uh, is there a sense within the, the committee of uh, whether this would be based in the U.S. Uh, or in the EU and what the implications are now? The question was, would with it be a, a, a U.S. or EU legal entity? It is based on our own uh, advice of, of both the UK solicitors and our U.S. counsel. Uh, it would be a U.S. entity. It is a, a U.S. entity can, in fact, be uh, uh, home marks in the EU and other countries, but it just has to be some sort of legal entity that the bureaucracies are prepared to treat with. And, and uh, as a as a follow-on question, does that have uh, further implications for uh, execution of the Mark Protection Committee's duties for membership or anything like that? It, the, the question was, does this have any follow-on effects to the Market Protection Committee? We haven't explored all, the committee really has not explored all of the things. We were really looking to guidance of whether it was worthwhile for us to even chase the rest of this. Um, it is our expectation that any entity we would set up would be basically a, uh, an extension of the Market Protection Committee. The NPC would control whatever that entity was. So, for example, one possibility would be the, the trustees of the trust would simply be the members of the Market Protection Committee. Yeah. Just by the uh, yeah, well, I'm not a question, but a correction. No. And the uh, committee's financial report on page 50 of the agenda, uh, you've been spelling it in your turn. Oh, we misspelled Esther's name. Oh, I'm sorry. So on page 50, it's uh, Horowitz, is H-O-R-W-I. It's which, yeah, W-I-C-H. I guess I should, while, while, they're dealing, while she's catching up on that, we had several of our service marks come due for renewal this year, and that's another drag on me. They have been renewed. Our domain names have been renewed for, that when they come up, we've been renewing them for five-year terms. Yep. Uh, Parliamentary inquiry. Uh, will the Mark Protection Committee elections uh, be held before or after we write a uh, loan of ratification for item 1.6? That's the one that removes the zone requirements for Mark Protection Committee. Uh, if we do, it doesn't matter. 
Uh, the effect of that would occur at the end of this business meeting in any case. So, yeah. <laughs> the answer is before anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so your, the report is complete, right? The report, I'm not sure any further questions, Mr. Chairman. Right. Uh, we need to do nominations for the elected uh, slots in the Market Protection Committee. Uh, for information, the appointment, uh, where I get to find the years here, on page, at the top of page 44 of the report is where we find the names of people going. Um, the appointment of Sandra Levy has, uh, is, uh, expires. Hang on, all these chairs are there. Sit down anywhere. <laughs> uh, the appointment of Sandra Levy uh, by Shaikhan 7 expires, and she leaves the committee. The, elect, uh, the elected members whose terms end this year are uh, Warren Buff, Linda Dinneroff, and where's the first one? And David, and David Hardy. Yes, I have the wrong set of glasses on here. I have all the I still have the wrong set of glasses, but this is easier to read, yes. Yes, uh, yeah, so Linda Dinneroff, Dave McCarty, and Warren Buff, who are spread evenly among the existing zones, uh, their terms end this year, and uh, unless re-elected, and the appointment of Sandra Levy uh, expires, and we will, whoever is elected uh, to hold, to be the 2016 Rolcon will appoint a member to the committee. Our question. I think there's an error in this first list because I don't believe my check is through 2017. I believe it's through 2016. I believe it's a year short of that. No, okay. You know, yeah, Deb Geisler, okay. Deb Geisler is saying that her appointment is actually through 2016, and that is correct because it's the same term as long con days. Yes, sorry. Running. Yeah. Um, as a follow on to that, on page 51 where it says site selection business, it's, it's as for a report of the 2017 World Farm site selection, how can that be? Shouldn't it be the 2016? I'm sorry, I still can't hear you. What page again? Page 51, Bill Cass, the financial report, keep going. And I think this is Sunday, and it says report of the 2017 World Tron site selection. 51? Page 41, I'm sorry, I'm 51. Yeah, my eyesight is not. It's just typos, just come up and see. Okay, sorry. I didn't know if that was a typo. I believe there's a number of errors on page 41, but we will not be getting to that until probably Sunday. So I decided it wasn't worthwhile going through it and not to. Sorry. Yes, orders of the day, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, let's get to the so you, sorry. people have other corrections for especially for section five, which we won't be getting to today or tomorrow. They should I, come up and tell the secretary after this session. I think I'm done with the portion about the membership of the committee, so you can take the combinations now. Okay. Oh what break is Are nominated? Are there any other nominations? Yes? Uh, 
Comrade John Cox. John Cox? Stand up. Stand, yeah, standing up is good. And yeah, I'm John, John Cox. Okay. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Okay. Um, the nominees are required to execute uh, a written, docu written document consenting to nomination and stating their residence uh, as of this uh, current time. Uh, so there's forms to do that up here at front, and the deadline for returning these forms is as set by the Secretary of the Business Meeting. We should have set them up. So the deadline is 5 p.m. today, so the nominees have to uh, complete uh, this form, uh, or, or I guess an equivalent written statement of their consent and residence, and submit it to, uh, to Linda, or uh, I'll take it by 5 p.m. The lead really needs to get to the secretary to make up the, the ballot for tomorrow. So we have four nominees. Uh, any other, okay, no, that's, I believe completes the uh, Mark Protection Committee uh, we usually appoint uh, tellers to count the ballots tomorrow, so anybody who'd like to be a teller can uh, volunteer to be after this session today, so before the session tomorrow, or whatever. So, indeed, we are now on section 3.2. 14. Okay, 14. Actually, 3.2.1 to be specific. This is the nitpicking and fly specking committee. The nitpicking and fly specking committee is what a less whimsical organization would call the rules committee. Uh, the uh, nitpicking and fly specking committee has maintains the list of resolutions and continuing effect and, and things of that nature. This year has submitted three proposals, the first two of which are standing rule amendments and are of a sufficiently related nature that the committee asks unanimous consent to consider them as a single proposal. Uh, and let me explain that further. There's a, they are listed as items 3211 on page 14 and 3212 on page 15. They are proposals to, uh, the second one is to raise the vote necessary for objection to consideration from the current two-thirds to three-fourths. And the second would be to allow the motion to postpone indefinitely, and postpone indefinitely is effectively kill this proposal for the duration of this world time. Uh, it would allow that, it's technically not, not allowed at this time by our rules, you then you have to suspend the rules and postpone indefinitely. It would allow the motion to be made during the preliminary business meeting and would allow four minutes of debate time on the question of whether the motion should be considered or not and would require a two-thirds vote to kill the motion without any further debate. It would be a way, a mechanism for the preliminary business meeting to suppress motions, new business, at the preliminary business meeting without the mechanism of objection to consideration. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that those two items be considered as a single standing rule amendment proposal. Is there any objection? Hearing none, will be considered as a single item. I believe it is, uh, the, the debate is in our commentary. Uh, objection to consideration has its uses. However, the committee believes that the motion is being overused by WISPAS because we tied our hands procedurally with other ways of suppressing motions. Um, there are many items that the business meeting is, does need to clear off the agenda at the preliminary meeting. However, few of them are so vile as to need to be killed without any debate at all. It is only fair, in the committee's opinion, that we allow the, the maker of the motion one at least short opportunity to say why it is even worthwhile to consider it. The mechanism we believe would happen is that when a motion came up for its first consideration, uh, someone would move to postpone it indefinitely. And that person would have up to two minutes to say why we shouldn't consider it. And then the probably maker of the motion would have two minutes to say why we should consider it. And then a two-thirds vote could kill it at that point. That, that's our debate from the committee's point of view. Thank you. 
establish a debate time limit of eight minutes for this item. Is there any debate? But I asked for objections and there were none. So I believe they'll be considered as a single item. Is there any uh, debate on these items? Yes? Are you speaking for or against? Chris Hensley, the, re the reason I'm for this motion is, as, as you saw at the show <coughs> the beginning of the meeting, there are people here who this is their first business meeting. OTC has traditionally been used for things which either have, have been used for things which have interesting legislative histories or other reasons that we wish to object to them, that someone who is new to the business meeting process does not, and it leaves them feeling shut out of the democratic process, and that is bad for what Smith just does. Because we are an essentially democratic body, and if people are feeling shut out, we're not going to get people involved. And it's just, and you know, that goes against the democratic principles which we're supposed to be proud of. Speeches against? Seeing none, we're prepared to go to vote. Okay. Move to amend. Move to amend. I was just asked yesterday. It's a good idea. I think if the principal... Roll the mic, please. I can't hear it. I think it's a good idea. If the principle is explained, is to make sure there's a chance for people to feel at least the basic arguments have been aired. This is only going to come up on fairly contentious things, and I therefore move to amend that it should be six minutes of standard debate time rather than four. So it's still fairly heavy, but I think it, it means that that objective would be better met. Is there a second for this amendment? Second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I ask a quick blank in that motion? Well, are there other values besides six and four? Hearing none, the vote is an amendment on the floor to replace four with six. Uh, it's a little seconded to make that amendment. Uh, is there any uh, speech on the amendment, uh, including speech against the amendment? Yes? Particularly at conventions where we're using uh, one hour time slots and therefore the business meeting, the preliminary might very well be limited to two hours. I don't think that we want to extend too much debate time on motions at the preliminary. I believe in four minutes people have been able to pretty well explain why they think this thing is at least worth discussing or why they think it isn't worth discussing. And if we allow six minutes, it's likely to end up being turning into lots more debate time. Speech in favor of replacing four by six. My name is Terry Neal. I think that if we end up with another agenda this big, that the business meeting organizers are perfectly capable of asking the con for a three hour slot. Speech against to replacing the four by six. If you can't convince us in two minutes that your proposal is even worth talking about, I really don't think that third minute will help. Speech in favor of replacing four by six? Seeing none, uh, any speeches against? Or, oh, sorry. I think we're going to assume that a motion to in order. Assuming this motion were passed and we were operating under this rule, then during that four minutes, a, or at the end of the four minutes, a motion to extend debate would be in order uh, as any other motion to extend debate. <clears throat> uh, I think there's no more debate on, currently on the amendment, so I'd like to proceed to a vote. Nobody seems to wish to speak. So, uh, those in favor of replacing four minutes by six minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed to replacing four by six, the nays have it. So, uh, we are back on the amendment, uh, on the unamended uh, motion, which is 3.2.1.1 and 0.2. Uh, Move to call the question. The 
timekeeper is learning how to be a timekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> it's what more is worth. Point of information. Yes. Just to clarify, you're also going to need this motion will include changing to two thirds to three quarters. Yes, this will include both 3.2.1.1 and 3.2.1.2. Yes. 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 So the motion's on uh, page 14 and the top one on page 15. Yes. Thank you. It's going to take This rules change would take effect at the end of the business meeting, unless by a special vote we, uh, the two thirds, would decide to make it take effect immediately. At this point, we have used up half of. Uh, actually, one minute for each side of the minutes. So we have six minutes left. Okay, anyway, is there any further debate on this motion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. Uh, this is the combination of the uh, concatenation of the motion on page 14 and the top one on page 15. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, I see the ayes have it. And so this is not going to take effect at the end of the business meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to suspend the rules and have this rule change take effect immediately. There is a mood and seconded to suspend the rules and have us take effect immediately. Uh, is there any debate on this? Or, uh, I don't think it's debatable. Uh, okay, well, I think it's undebatable, so let's we'll proceed to a vote. Unless somebody wishes to make it either debatable. Uh, those in favor of suspending the rules so it takes effect immediately, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? There being more than two thirds in favor, the rules are suspended so that. Uh, these changes to the standing rules are effective immediately. Now we have a slight pause for some great to catch up. consistently throughout the Constitution. And on behalf of the NPFC, I uh, make I move the adoption of that constitutional amendment. Okay, so this will, as a constitutional amendment, this will have to uh, come up tomorrow. Um, I set the debate limit at six minutes. And we're on, uh, we're at bottom of page 15 is a motion which extends through the middle of page 17. And uh, two yes, minutes. what? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Uh, uh, six and two. Any other debate time limits suggested? <coughs> Eight. Four. Eight. Four. Four. Okay. Like even numbers today. Any other times? Okay. Those uh, hearing none. Further values. Those in favor of eight minutes, please raise your hand. 
Those opposed? Thank you. Uh, those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Leave the nays have it. Those in favor of four minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. And four minutes. Or so. So this is a move to amend it to remove the changes to 3.11.4. Uh, is there a second to this amendment? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, is there any debate? Seeing none, those in favor of this amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and the, uh, uh, the constitutional amendment is amended by deleting the changes from 3.11.4. Is there any more business that is, yeah, for which the preliminary business meeting can act on, on this constitutional amendment? Yes. So, I, I'm thinking, yes? Yes, the item Yes, I believe that completes the report. Yes, that, that, that completes the nitpicking and vice making committee report. In the interest of efficiency, I did not raise objections to these uh, being submitted by the committee, but it is my firm belief that these are outside the scope of the committee. And I move that the committee, the nitpicking and fly specking committee, be, be requested in the future to avoid submitting substantive changes, motions with substantive changes. The purpose of the committee is simply to keep, keep records and to uh, make sure that our, our, our permanent co co codification is done and not to make not to make or suggest changes. That does not, in fact, prevent any member of the committee or any combination of members from making those suggestions, but it, it does avoid having them come up as a uh, privilege, uh, committee privilege. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, is there a second to this motion? Yeah. Uh, moved and seconded uh, to uh, what was the operational word? Request. Request to the New Peking Flyspan Committee not to submit uh, substantive changes. Um, this is something which people's opinion might reasonably differ. Uh, set a debate time limit of six minutes. Uh, is there any speech against? Seeing none, the way it should proceed to the vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? 
the eye is, uh, is free. Uh, let's, 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 okay, let's do a kind of joke. that 
Let's let's recess for for five minutes, okay? No, no. no. We have to pause anyway. Let's go. Let's go. We need to pause for a second because of a technical reason with the video. So we are going to be pausing it.